Welcome back. I'd like to introduce the next speaker, who is Leslie Carroll Botha. Her subject is woman, an overlooked biomarker in the scientific study of cycles. Well, of course, women have um, experienced cycles their whole, their, most of their lives. Um, Leslie Carroll Botha was a member of the Foundation for the Study of Cycles and an honorary board member of the Cycles Research Institute. Under the leadership, she was honoured with the Edward R. Dewey Award for her groundbreaking work on introducing the nature of the study of women's monthly cycles and their influence on behaviours. Both is a women's health educator, broadcast journalist, author and public speaker. Sam, Sam Schreiner called her one of the 21st century's most prominent natural cycle research in his book, The World According to Cycles, How Recurring Forces Can Predict the Future and Change Your Life. Okay, it's all yours, Leslie. Thank you so very much. So very happy to be here. Thank you for the honor. Um, I, Ray, I have to go over, off of what you said in the beginning. I find it fascinating that all of us coming from different places around the world, different fields, different, I guess, fields, uh, works of expertise started nat uh, researching natural cycles. And we found Edward Dewey. We found the foundation for the study of cycles. Um, it's what I did from my work with uh, working in a family planning clinic, learning about the menstrual cycle. I learned more information working at that clinic than I did in all my years of education. But having the opportunity to sit at the front desk when women were coming in and noticing that they were coming in on the same day of their cycle, month after month after month with the same type of problems. Um, migraines, fatigue, infections, viral infections, um, STDs. Um, and once I started noticing that rhythmic pattern, I started, I started uh, realizing that by definition, women's menstrual cycles fell into the definition of a natural cycle. And yes, my work has proved me right. Let me get to my sharing my screen and with all of you and just start sharing my PowerPoint with all of you. So here we are today. My name is Leslie Carol Botha. Um, again, like Ed said, how hard is it to put 34, 35 years of research into 45 minutes, but we're doing our best to do that. Uh, my website is lesliecarolbotha.com and feel free to visit my website and also feel free uh, to email me if you have questions and I will be glad to make my PowerPoint into a PDF uh, document and share it with any participants. Cycle Keepers, Women and Overlooked Biomarker in the Scientific Study of Cycles. Women were the original cycle keepers. I have been in this work for 35 years. Um, I am an author, a, a public broadcaster. I was on the radio for 30 years. I, I published a magazine. I still consult with women. I still live my life with, with cycles. Um, once I learned about that, when I was back in my late 20s and started living with my menstrual cycle, the first thing I noticed is I started to trust myself. I started to trust my mind, mood, and behaviors um, because women go through shifts in their cycles. And we're not taught about that. Men know it, <laughs> but we don't know it. And, and I'm not gonna get into all of that today. I could do seminars and seminars and seminars. This is some of the work I've done. Um, my book is Understanding Your Mind, Mood, and Hormone Cycle. Um, my uh, research has appeared in uh, Sam Schreiner's book and in these other books. And lastly, uh, released just two years ago, or last year now, Shattered Dreams, the HPV Vaccine Exposed. And my work was just published in Menstrual Cycle Evaluation in Women's Health and Overlooked Biomarker in Vaccine Injury. Very controversial subject. I get it. I'm not going to focus on it. What I am going to focus on, though, Oh, did I do that? I don't know where my PowerPoint went. Sorry about that. Let me get back to where I was. So what I want to focus on, though, is what we don't understand. 
and what women don't understand is that we have three phases to our cycle. We have the uh, pre-ovulatory, ovulatory, and post-ovulatory phase to our cycle. I think this thing is going without me. <laughs> How do I get that to stop, guys? I can end this now and bring it back up again. Sorry about that. Ray, I guess we should have done this together. Here we go from the beginning. So what I noticed was that during the premenstrual phase and science backs us up is when hormone levels drop, immunity levels also drop. And that's what gets women into trouble. So I wrote this article that was republished in Nexus Magazine and included in the Shattered Dreams book to warn women about not just vaccination, any type of medication, any type of surgery, dental surgery, and that we need to start scheduling these surgeries around the most powerful times of our menstrual cycle, which is during ovulation. In fact, a study came out years ago called Timing of the Menstrual Cycle and um, peri for Perimenopausal Women and Breast Cancer. And what the study showed is that um, there's a window on either side of ovulation where immunity is the strongest. When we get down to the premenstrual phase, immunity takes that dive, as I mentioned. And when it takes that dive and we're still going in for surgeries because we're scheduling these, these things around our doctor's schedules, um, we have more chances of side effects and negative outcomes. So body literacy, menstrual cycle lit literacy is crucial to, for our long health. So this is what I found, Edward R. Dewey, Dividing his, uh, devoting his life to the study of cycles, right? We've all been there, that's why we're all here. Um, but what I found, and Ray, I couldn't remember the, the uh, book or the paper, but I think you nailed it today, um, The Case for Cycles. And I found this paragraph right here at the bottom, one of his writings. Do we acknowledge that women are mysterious creatures and that we must do everything we can to find out more about them? That was my aha moment. That's when I joined the Cyclees group. That's when I met Chuck Batchley, Blatchley, excuse me, and I met um, Bill Armstrong, who welcomed me with open arms, even though I was nouveau with all of this and nervous. They just embraced me immediately. And then, um, and then I got involved with the Foundation for the Study of Cycles. Oops. Yes, I am nervous. So here we are. I know Ed mentioned 8,000 BC, 14,000 BC. I'm taking you back to 25,000 to 20,000 BC e, when people were carving the lunar cycle on antler bones. Very important. The cycles are integral to all of life on our planet. The Blanchard bone was its carved reindeer bone found in 1911 by a French archeologist, laid in a museum until 1965 when a researcher took the time to study the artifact. There are artifacts all over the world. This is the man, Alexander Marshak, who found it. And he researched and realized the notations were made 20,000 years before the development of writing, arithmetic, and the writings of later cultures that we have regarded as civilized nations. This goes way back to the earliest times because of women's role as cycle keepers. This is a Venus a figurine in a, a bas relief, um, again, She's holding a cornucopia and there are um, notches in that according to the moon's, the lunar calendar. Now, let me talk to you. There was a time when the lunar calendar was used by every nation, every civilization on earth. Every month started with the new moon. There was a 
wonderful ebb and flow to that. The month peaked with the full moon and then waned uh, in, into uh, the last phases of the moon cycle. So when the new moon started, life started again. Full moon, dancing, rituals. Uh, remember, no lights, no buildings. We were out under the full moon, gathering rituals. And when it came down then to the waning moon, we went into ourselves. Women went into menstrual huts even, but women menstruated at the same time. We were the cycle keepers. In fact, there is a book called, it's been renamed, Who Cooked the Last Supper? But I have this book, it's been my Bible. Woman with her inexplicable moon rhythms and power for creating new life was the most sacred mystery of the tribe. So miraculous, so powerful. She had to be more than man, more than human. As primitive man began to think symbolically, there was only one explanation. Woman was the primary symbol, the greatest entity of all, a goddess. Women were the first to be aware of the relationship between their body cycles and those of the moon. Their understanding of the cyclical nature of the universe led them be to become the first astronomers, mathematicians, agriculturalists, healers, uh, agriculturists twice, and prophets. We were the midwives. We brought life into the world. We helped transition life out of this world. And that was our role. We were, by definition of the menstrual cycle, the cycle keepers. So upon learning of the majestic system, secret of time, these ant ancestral, oops, let me go back. These ancestral women gave, um, had the power to refuse sex. I think that's what it says, hold on. Hard to see on my screen. Uh, ancestral females then had gained the power to refuse sex when they were ovulating. Men were forced to confront women who possessed a mind of their own. Women taught men about time and the men used this knowledge to become the planet's most fearsome predator. So in 1542, we went from a lunar calendar. I believe there's only one country left who uses the lunar calendar in this day and age and it's in the far east, could be Israel. Um, and we started using the Gregorian calendar which was based on taxes and production. And I will tell you what, what a whack to the endocrine system. Men then invited, invented religion, um, blah, blah, blah. You can read this as you're going along. Um, but what we saw was once the shift went from a lunar calendar onto a Gregorian calendar, there was also a shift in the power, respect of the sacredness of woman being the, the font, uh, the cycle keepers um, to this new male dom dominated patriarchy. So I'm here today to present, because all you guys and all my colleagues have had their focus on charts and graphs and commodities and markets in the studies of cycles, really easy to analyze, um, fascinating work, don't get me wrong, but nobody is paying attention to what has happened to women, the initial cycle, the, the primary cycle keepers over the last 2000 years, especially since the 1970s, 60s and 70s, when the birth control pill was introduced to the market. Um, here's, this is fascinating work, circadian clocks in the ovary. This came out in 2010, uh, 10 years ago, albeit but we have circadian rhythms running through our body. In fact, I almost walked away from my work at one point in time because I was so bothered by um, lack of interest, um, by the push for hormone birth control, um, disregard for women's cycles. And then three men won the Nobel Peace Prize uh, two or three year, three or four years ago now in medicine and biology for their work and research in circadian rhythms. And it's predicted that this research in time is going to change how we do medicine. Because right now we have one model that fits everyone except it doesn't fit women 50% of the time or 50% of the population because we don't feel fit into a testosterone driven model. We have ebbs and flows to our cycle. We have immune high points and immune low points. And that's where women get into trouble. They also, remind me of this, get into trouble with alcohol and drugs. 
Here's another study. Study finds key brain regions smaller in birth control pill users. Yes, this is a big concern. We are talking about millions and millions and millions of women around the world on hormone birth control. It's given out like candy. It's advised, it's mandated, it's recommended. You can't go into a doctor's office unless you opt into uh, some sort of hormone birth control. And unbeknownst to most of my audience today that girls as young as 12 are being put on birth control, which is not nothing short of sterilization. There has been not been adequate studies on long-term effects of birth control for girls in their teens. It certainly whacks out their endocrine system, which at a tender age of puberty, 12, 13, 14, 15, is the most fragile time of her life. And here that endocrine system, her brain, the hypothalamus is being shut down. Ovulation is being shut down, therefore not uh, af being affected by that circadian rhythm any longer. And these girls are a mess. And I will point that out to you as we move on. The hormone cycle starts in the brain. It starts in the brain and it travels Talk about another cycle. It travels down to the ovaries where it's making hormones, the body's natural hormones, production for reproductivity. In my world, my perfect world, which is just my little world, when we come into this world, we are beating to the drum of the moon cycle, the lunar cycle. Then women enter their reproductive phase. And when they enter the reproductive phase, their body takes on its own dance, its own rhythm that either matches the moon or goes against the moon. And that's important information that I teach, not going into it uh, today at any length. Um, however, it is an important dance and it affects everything in the body. So where has all our power gone? We start with the brain, the hypothalamus, the pituitary gland, the thymus, the adrenal glands. Sorry, some that got, got, got cut off. These are all our endocrine organs. They are the balancing act in the body. They are the regulators in the body. Um, and without these, this cyclical function in the endocrine gland and the pineal gland, which brings in the external circadian rhythms, lunar rhythms, and sends them through the endocrine system, which is like an antenna, and it affects every single uh, organ in the body and hormones in our body. Without that influence, we become lost. And we have become lost. And it's, hysteria is a word used to make women feel insane for knowing what they know. Eve Ensler summed that up, summed up women, women's experience in one sentence. Hysteria a word used to make women feel insane for knowing what they know. We've been suppressed. It starts with suppression of the brain and goes down through every organ in the body. In fact, think about this. Women are the only species on the planet that have been experimented on continuously, relentlessly have been profited off of for their body parts continuously. Uh, lobotomies, birth control, mastectomies, we have our breasts taken off, hysterectomies, we have our uterus ripped out, oophorectomies, then they go in and take our ovaries out. Now we have vaginal plastic surgery and Liza, I could never figure that because I can't see my vagina. So it's gotta be for you guys. And I don't know why women were gonna do that anyway. And now we're moving into in vitro fertilization because fertility, infertility as an, is at an all time high. We've lost our cycle. We've lost our rhythmic beat, our rhythmic dance. And when that happens, then we start bargaining with mother nature. And what is the result of that bother? bargain when, when women intervene to prevent nature from running its course. This is an excellent book. As far back as Aristotle, thousands of years, tens of centuries ago, it was thought that a woman's uh, uterus worked in competition with her brain. 
common and predominant thought was that the uterus controlled the emotions of the woman, that those emotions overrode the rational of the brain. There is some truth to that. However, that truth has definitely been distorted because women are not body literate, because we have not taught about this rhythmic dance. So 18th century overectomies were performed because it was believed that women were, if the women were castrated, they could be orderly, industrious, and productive. Good Lord. Millions of women worldwide are using these oral contraceptives. Millions of women worldwide are suffering tremendously. So they've become the organs of crisis. If organs, if the ovaries were organs of crisis, uh, conception did not take place, the uterus would cry um, because of this erroneous and damaging philosophy. The concept of femaleness was equated to a mental illness that required constant management. And indeed, in the 18th, 17th, 18th, 19th centuries, mental institutions were filled with women. And because um, women were owned by their husbands during some of those centuries. Those husbands had every right to lock them up and to keep them there in those mental institutions. Uh, so th there's a lot of shame and stigma surrounding our natural, powerful message. Not only are women given the message at a very young age that they need to hide their menstruation um, because it's shameful, it's dirty, makes them unclean, they are also told they do not need to menstruate at all. And that is the push, the cycle keepers, suppressed. Government mandates, and I went over this, go uh, encourage girls to go on birth control at the age of 12, and women's natural body process have been medicalized from menstruation, through birth, through menopause. We have been medicalized and most of us buy into it. So mental health of women, this came from the International Council on Women's Policy Research, albeit some time ago, 2014 is what I'm going to say. I've used this over and over again. The mental health of women um, is one of the, out of the top six health conditions facing women, this is number two. Uh, sexually transmitted disease is number one, mental health is number two, and suicide is number three. That's how unhappy we are. We're no longer women. We're no longer cycle keepers. We don't know who we are. We're lost in a lost world. And when, and I always looked at women as being the atom, the nucleus of an atom. And that our men and children, our partners and our children, uh, were the electrons and the protons. And when you destroy that atom, you destroy that nucleus. Just like the mitochondria of a cell, you destroy that mitochondria, it stops functioning and becomes dysfunctional. And that's what we are seeing. Suicide mortality rates among women by race and ethnicity, Native American women higher, white women come right after that, all women. Um, and there are reasons that the other numbers are so much lower and much more community and respect for the maternal figure in those cultures. Trends in maternal mortality, this is frightening. Um, where it's gone down everywhere in the world, it's increased in the United States. And yet most of us are unaware of this. In fact, premature births um, are on the rise. Years ago, um, one of the science papers came out with, uh, hallelujah, we finally understand the mechanisms of action um, of why the maternal body will not um, reject the fetal body. Then two or three years later, they came back with a retraction and saying, whoops, that mechanism has been broken. And what is has indeed happened is that the maternal body is now rejecting the fetal body and seeing it, perceiving it as, as a, an invader, um, a threat, because maternal health has become so compromised. And for many, many reasons, synthetic hormones is a big reason. 
um, lack of nutrition is another big reason, and I'm not going to go into all of these today. Uh, in 1970, there was a hearing without women's voices in the Congress. So the pill was introduced to the market. It was known as a magic pill. I have no problem with that, except it was very high estrogen. Women were dying in droves. Women were, every time we laid down, we spread our legs, we were having a baby. Um, we'd have nine, 10, 11, 12 babies and each baby without replacing those nutrients was killing that women of those women, especially in um, ghetto areas in New York City, um, where there was a lot of concern and Margaret Sanger was concerned and, and really worked on this and to get this pill onto the market. However, it's such high estrogen. Um, they trialed the pill in Puerto Rico and then came back and said, Puerto Rico said, we don't want it. It's too many side effects on our women but it was released into the US market anyway. And there were so many side effects that there was the Nelson hearings in January, 1970. And um, January 1st or 2nd, it was right, right after the new year. And women were not even allowed to participate. They had to sit up in the gallery of the Senate and listen to the medical experts. And there was one medical expert who stood up and said, let's put it this way, estrogen is to cancer. Estrogen is to cancer like fertilizer is to wheat. This document, the Nelson hearings document um, is thousands of pages long. Every birth control side effect is listed and yet it was not acknowledged um, or recognized or the information given to doctors. So you can see here, there is a natural cycle. The menstrual cycle is a natural rhythmic cycle. It has a function that affects every other system in our body. Um, so this is part of my seminal work. Uh, and really what brought me uh, to do work with the National uh, Foundation for the Study of Cycles. I developed a program for at-risk girls. I taught them how to chart their cycles. I highly recommend it for any mother in the audience. Um, and as you can see, there is a big difference between the menstrual phase on the left where you see day 29 on the cycle day, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, and the first day of the period, which is day one, two, three, four, and then right before ovulation, everything that this young girl, 13 year old girl was feeling um, cleared up and cleared out. Now this young girl was sexually abused. She came to the restorative care program from, um, from a mental institution. Um, I still remember her face and this was 15 years ago. Um, before I could get back to her, she was put back into the mental institution and, and on more medications because we don't recognize the premenstrual phase, the hormone level drops, the mood changes, um, immunity. This is where we should be really nutrating and supporting our girls, helping them understand what is going on. So I developed these charts. These girls would chart uh, once once a day, their supervisor made them uh, do it. They, and I came in every two weeks uh, to do another class on women's history or values or choices, decision-making. And then on that following time, cause I was rotating between eight schools on that following, then we would do another chart. And I would, once these girls put in their uh, symptoms over here on the left-hand side, then I would take those charts away and and not bring them out until I had three months worth of charts. And I have a portfolio of these charts. But again, if we understood what was going on with these young girls, we could be more preventive and help them be more, um, become advocates for themselves instead of leaving them loose in the water to sink or to swim. In fact, most of these girls, let me go on to the next chart. Here's another girl. She was on Depo Provera, I think. She didn't know where she, actually, this was not her. 
this, look how black and ugly she is on the left-hand side. She didn't know where she was in her cycle. And then just naturally, you can barely see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Look how she pops out. This went on month after month after month. And I would lay out three months worth of charts and go, look, see, see? And they were, it was like night and day because what happens to these women and young girls, it's like falling into a rabbit hole. I am fine yesterday. What happened to me today? I'm depressed, I'm moody, I wanna end my life. I wanna do alcohol, I don't wanna do drugs, I wanna run away, I want to not live anymore. What's happened to me? And then that's reinforced by teachers and parents. What's wrong with you? You were so great last week and this week you're just off the wall. What's wrong with you? Shame, stigma, we don't know what's going on with our body. And a lot of these girls were in this restorative care program actually ran away from their homes in a hormonal rage and ended up in jail. Alcohol, drugs. Oh, by the way, no one told us, oh, no one told us that you can handle alcohol and drugs at the beginning part of your cycle in the pre-ovulatory ovulatory phase of your cycle. You get over to the post-ovulatory phase, the premenstrual phase, immunity takes a dive you're still doing the same amount of alcohol and drugs, what happens? You're out of control. You're under the table. You're crying, you're raging because the body reacts differently to alcohol and drugs during that phase. In fact, I did a class at the uh, detention center for five, five women, five women in orange, never met them before, hanging out in the blue collar bars uh, in the town I lived at the time, five women. I said, alcohol here? Alcohol here, five women said to me, no wonder we end up in jail every month and have our periods. We, they were arrested for disorderly conduct and disruptive behavior. This is a huge issue. This is a social injustice issue that is not being addressed anywhere in our country. So one more chart right here again airy fairy colors boom black dark ugly when these girls saw the same pattern repeat itself month after month after month it was an aha moment they knew then that this dark phase where these dark markings are they knew it was going to end they knew it was a cyclical phase so then we started working on prevention so instead of their running away from the home, the restorative care program, ending up in jail again, in fact, 99% of the girls coming into the program had already been in jail and had their periods in jail. Hello. We started working on prevention. How do we prevent that type of behavior? And then we brought in their mothers because their mothers were a part of the program. Um, and then I started teaching them about women's history and say, so you wanna know about abuse? sexual abuse, trauma, let's go back. Let's take a dance through history and let me tell you what women have been through for 2000 years. So the marketing of drugs on unsuspecting women has been going on for more than 50 years. It continues to go on and we continue to buy into it. Um, there's a website I invite you to look at. It's called iudalert.com. If there's time, um, uh, we might take a peek at it, but we are encouraging women to post their stories about these devices that contains synthetic hormones. Think about it, folks. When we talk about it right here, it's like makes perfect sense, all right? Natural hormones, natural cycles, circadian rhythm, functioning, body. The body is a, Cascadian, a cascading symphony of hormone messages. You suppress that and start adding synthetic hormones? Nobody knows. Birth control is actually the largest uncontrolled experiment in medical history. And now we're 40, 50, let's see, it's the 1970s, 30, 40, almost 50 years into this. And we're starting to see the outcomes. <clears throat> this is what one woman wrote on the iudalert.com website. They feel betrayed by the system. And there are too many women going through the exact same thing.
So we've got fourth generation birth control, sterilization and infertility on the rise. Nuvaring, IUDs, mini pills, Depo-Provera injection. Women are injected, inserted and implanted with all sorts of devices filled with a chemical cocktail of synthetic hormones that is not only affecting their health, it is affecting the health of their children. It's affecting their brain. What we're seeing is a thinning, not only is the hypothalamus suppressed, but we're seeing of the, a thinning of the frontal lobe with women on birth control, synthetic hormones. And that same thinning of the frontal lobe is now showing up in our offspring. And it, it is now called autism the same characteristics. There is a correlation, there is a causation, there is no proof. And that, I don't know if I'll see that in, in my lifetime, but there are studies coming out on this. I mean, think about it. When you suppress the brain, what good outcome is going to come of it? So all of these um, now, oh, let me talk about DE. Oh, let me talk about Assure. Assure is a sterilization device that came on the market, I don't know when, but within the last 10 years, it was just taken off. Um, get this. It was some nickel, nickels rods, all right, um, that were inserted into women's fallopian tubes um, to prevent um, well, to sterilize them so they wouldn't have to have a hysterectomy so they wouldn't lose their uterus. Now, what were the side effects? The nickel rods broke through the fallopian tubes. They get lost in the abdominal cavity. They uh, damage other organs, including the uterus, and women ended up en masse having hysterectomies. DES. DES was introduced between the 1940s and the 1970s. It was marketed as a multivitamin to prevent miscarriage for women. It was the highest dose estrogen on the market by the time, at the time. Um, it was given to 10 million women. Now you multiply that out, 10 million women, each having two children, three children, going down generations. Um, DES is, has caused a rare form of vaginal cancer in women, in the offspring of, of mothers who had, were given uh, DES. And it is also changing the sex of men. There are some of us who are doing the research who feel that DES is a large contributor to the spike in the transgender population. And that's what you get when you start messing with mother nature, when you start bargaining with natural cycles. We don't know the final outcome, but I can tell you right now that it's, it's not pretty. Birth control side effects. We've been told over and over again, it's all in our head. In a way it is all in our head because it's affecting our brain, which is affecting the signaling going through all parts of our body. But how it's told to women is demeaning, shameful. It's all in your head. You're not feeling that. Your birth control is fine. There are no side effects. No one's told us about any side effects. You're imagining it. Oh, you're on an estrogen pill. All right, let's put you on a progestin pill. It's like a ping pong game going back and forth and the body and the endocrine system doesn't know what to do with all that information doesn't know what to do with any of it. Look, and this is just what I could fit on here, all right, of uh, some of these uh, birth control side effects. There are many, many more. PMS, we know of, PMDD, you're not aware, premenstrual dysphoric disorder has been linked to a progestin type of birth control method. It is PMS on steroids. Women with PMDD, and there are groups on Facebook with thousands of women in these groups all around the world who are suffering two weeks out of the month they are suffering their children are suffering their husbands are suffering i've met some of these men i've talked with some of these men helping to counsel them they're they've got ptsd they're trauma survivors they love their wives and for two weeks out of the month she's a goddess 
And for two weeks out of the month, she, he doesn't even recognize her anymore. Who is she? She doesn't know who she is because she's not in control any longer. Her hormones have been so messed up. Deep vein thrombosis, pulmonary embolism, death, stroke, heart attacks. Every year, thousands of women die as a result of birth control and nobody notices. Nobody's paying attention. And yet I'm in touch with some of these parents. One girl died from the Nuva ring. Her mother started a foundation, which we were doing research into all these issues. And then her mother committed suicide. So it has a ripple effect. But lots of women are afraid to be left alone with their children. They're passing them off to parents. And, and uh, we have the stories every now and then of, of women driving into a lake or a river and drowning their kids and drowning them. This is all cyclical. Doesn't mean they're crazy. It means they are in such a dark place in their head and they don't know how to get out and they don't need to be in jail for the rest of their lives. This is just some of it, heavy menstrual bleeding. Autoimmune disorders, inflammation, hair loss. Oh my God, hair loss is rampant amongst women. Hair loss is rampant. It's called, it's um, these new methods of birth control suppress progesterone, which is a vital hormone. It's, it, women are vital. Um, they need it. It's a feel-good hormone. Um, you need progesterone in the uterus to prevent heavy bleeding. You need progesterone to prevent miscarriages, which are on the rise. Um, and when that, pro progest that progesterone is suppressed by progestin, women dive deep. Women dive deep. And it is so hard to get them to understand what is going on. I spend hours and hours in these groups trying to educate them and their stories are just, just heartbreaking. So I don't know where we are on time, Ray, <laughs> um, but this is my last screen. So we've gone from cycles keepers to prisoners of our bodies. There is a Native American proverb that states a nation is not defeated until the hearts of the women are on the ground. And I can tell you now, and I will tell you now, that the hearts of the women around the world, and especially in this country, are on the ground. So we need to pay attention to our cycle keepers. We need to reinforce and change our education system. Um, and, and so that's why I'm participating in the Foundation for the Study of Cycles, and I've been such a uh, menstrual health advocate most of my life. So thank you very much. I'm sorry I bumbled the first part of all that, <laughs> but um, I'm back now. Oh my goodness, yeah. I'm one minute off on my time. Well done. Uh, well, well done, Leslie. Uh, I can't say I enjoyed that, Leslie, but it was very illuminating. Um, no, I was not meant to, for anyone I to. I know, I know. We can see the pain of it all uh, on your face uh, as you talk about the things. Yes. Um, you mentioned the largest uncontrolled experiment uh, is birth control pills. And uh, I think we can see that really is true. Um, that's what's gone on. Uh, when we interfere, interfere with the cycles of nature without understanding them fully, and it's very difficult to understand them fully. Um, well, the other thing is that... Sex is involves two people most yeah. times. Con conjoined <laughs> sex it involves two people, and so the onus has been on women for all of these years, yeah. with great detriments. And so there is a, a now uh, a website called naturalwomanhood.org um, where they um, are teaching natural fertility. Uh, methods. There are more fertility uh, apps coming out, and now there is more of a con conversation starting to happen between um, men and women in fertility and times not to have sex or alternate sex and times to have sex. That, that is the good news coming out of all this. It has to happen. Um, and we can see that um, you've mentioned how this is a disconnect 
from uh, nature. And uh, we can see that um, this is happening on a wide range of different things because we know like, for example, that the um, sperm, the fertility of male sperm has been um, dropping for decades now and no one knows how to reverse that or anything. So, uh, um, and autism increase and so on. So uh, these things are all um, uh, things that we should be concerned about. Um, Mark, uh, Mark asked a question. Um, may endometriosis as a consequence of interrupting a woman's cycle? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I have worked with women with endometriosis. I've helped them to reverse it by teaching them how to live with their natural cycle and get off the medications and the synthetic hormones that only prolong it. And women with endometriosis yeah, yeah. are in a lot of pain. And, and you mentioned that, um, th that they said the woman's uterus competes with the brain. Uh, I'd like to suggest that, um, that in men too, the, the two ends of the, the spine uh, compete for the blood flow and um, only one of them can ever work properly at a time. We all know you guys have two heads, so yeah, we get, <laughs> and we get that part. <laughs> but it's, it's, as we know, and natural cycle keepers, researchers know, there is no competition, especially in human biology. It is one beautiful um, mechanism and everything is internet connected and interrelated. So even when you're taking an organ out or an amp amputating a limb or um, heart surgery, there are going to be implications because doctors don't handle these organs with respect. So they rip them out and then they put them back in again and, and the body's just going, ho, 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 going into shock and depression. And people don't realize that after a surgery, we have a long ways to go and, and, and hopefully, um, you know, so, this knowledge uh, of circadian- Richard Smith is the chief executive of the Foundation for the Study of Cycles. And he says, thank you, Leslie. Your work is very profound. We're grateful for you to share it with the FSC. Uh, and uh, I, I, I've been in contact with Leslie for a very long time uh, and mostly by email and other things, but uh, seeing her face when she describes these things, um, we, I can see the depth of your uh, concern and uh, I think it's something that um, the foundation can uh, get more information about and we can share it so that uh, our society learns some things from these things uh, thank because you it's, yeah thank you very much so thanks thanks very much Leslie thank you